and it was the 2024 index of U.S. military strength. Mm -hmm. And it said, I'll, I'll kind of run through them. It said the Army strength was marginal, Navy weak, Marine Corps strong. So Troy Black will be very, very happy about that one. <laughs> Air, Air Force very weak, Space Force marginal, nuclear capability marginal. What's your perspective on the propensity and the willingness to join today? And how do you assess where the Army is right now? Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So today we're gonna to talk about a hot topic in the military sphere, and that is the ongoing retention and recruitment crisis the entire military is going through right now, okay? So we're gonna talk about why there's such a problem with recruitment and retention, why nobody seems to wanna to join the military anymore, um, and then from my perspective, the ways that we could actually go about solving this, because uh, if you haven't seen, the military is spending millions and millions of dollars on advertisements and marketing trying to fix the recruitment problem it's just like they just can't figure out why no one wants to join but i have a pretty good finger on the pulse of this um, because there's so many young people who are thinking about joining the military or going special forces things like that that follow my channel reach out to me send me messages um, and i think i have sort of boiled it down to three major reasons why nobody's joined the military anymore and we're going to talk about those okay but first before we do that i got a big update for y'all so check this out all right guys finally by demand we've got the channel's merch in stock all right what do we got we got tank tops we've got t-shirts we've got the t-shirts in od green those of you in the military can wear those with your uniform rep the channel we've also got super nice hoodies now guys i went with a super nice 50 50 blend athletic material all right i uh, would rather sell good high quality stuff that you can wear be comfortable in stuff i like to wear same thing with the tank tops Super nice soft material, hoodies as well. Not only that, we also got the coolest part, the channel's hats. We have them in black, multi-cam, and of course, the one I got on here, your classic multi-cam, leather patches and stitching. Super nice, high quality, comfortable, fit perfect. So, hopefully by the time you guys see this, I've got the Shopify merch store up. You guys can just click on the links, get you some. Very limited supply on this first one, so I've had a lot of people reach out in interest, so grab it quick, because you'll have to wait for the next order if not. All right, guys, back to the video. Yeah, guys, as you can see, I'm repping the black camo hat today. All right, so first thing we need to do, um, and we're gonna be rolling a bunch of clips from the recent Jedbird podcast where the Sergeant Major of the Army was on talking about this exact thing, okay? Um, and now I want to state this up front. I have a ton of respect for him. He's the first Green Beret Sergeant Major of the Army. That's awesome representation for us. Um, however, I think he is way off base on the recruitment issues. And I'm going to sort of talk about why. Um, and first we need to really do is talk about the actual numbers. Okay, so I want to roll this first clip um, and see what the Sergeant Major of the Army um, is saying about the number situation. Okay, let's check it out. Um, we've had some challenges. I mean, we've been at this. We've been on this recruiting journey for seriously on the journey two plus years now. Like, this is a priority. General Conville and Secretary Warmoth have made. Um, they have not mixed words. This is a priority. Um, and you know, I don't want to get out ahead of the secretary or or jinx it, but we're we're on track to make our numbers this year. Now. The truth, though, is we need those numbers to be higher in the upcoming years because we actually need to grow the Army based off the global environment we talked about at the very beginning, right? All right. Now, um, is the military actually on track to meet recruitment numbers this year? Oh, yeah, well, we'll see. But what I can say is looking at what just happened this last year, we definitely didn't. In fact, uh, the numbers were awful. Okay, so just some numbers here, guys. So this is an objective um, thing. I'm not just making these things up, right? And that is 2023, the entire military missed recruitment numbers by 41,000 soldiers. That is a ton, okay? Um, 
and only the Marines, and technically the Space Force, but whatever, only the Marines were the only ones to meet retention and recruitment numbers. And that's going to be very important for later when we talk about um, the first major issue, okay? Um, now, recruitment has dropped overall in the military since 2013, 10 years ago. 35% overall. That's going to be a very important number for later as well. Um, and then some other statistics here. Only 23% of young people age 18 to 24 can even qualify to join the military because they're not smart enough, they're not fit enough, behavior health, all sorts of different issues. And then 53% of people age 18 to 30 have a negative view on the military as a whole okay that's really really bad okay now uh, now that we've, we've sort of identified yes we have a massive recruitment problem okay and retention problem as well um, pretty much everyone is getting out that can get out also okay um, now I want to roll another clip before I get into this because I want you to see what the sergeant major of the army and by extension of him saying this is what the top levels of the Department of Defense, because he really is just an extension of that, um, what they really think the reason why people aren't joining the military is, okay? And we're going to talk about that. Let's check this clip. I stay out of the political side of the house. Um, it's a beautiful thing being in uniform. Um, I love it. Um, I, I took an oath to the Constitution, and, and, uh, and, and it's a fantastic thing. Um, but I will tell you on the propensity to serve, I think there's some misunderstanding out there. Uh, we see from different survey data, it's like, well, I don't want to put my life on hold. Um, I don't want my son or daughter, remember the influencer in this conversation, not just the 18-year-old. I don't want my child to be in harm's way. Because um, the predominance of the information environment is always negative. All right, so, uh, you know, I, don't, I want to say this again. I'm, I'm sorry, Sergeant Major, this is... <laughs> The, the reason that, you know, people are worried about dying or that their parents don't want them to join because they're too worried about them is so disingenuous, okay? That has always been a consideration for the last 200 years with the military. And not only that, we're not at war right now. In fact, this is the safest time of any time, technically, to join the military. So you're hard-pressed to convince me that the reason why people aren't joining is because they fear for their lives. When I just told you statistically, recruitment's down 35% since 2013, the middle and height of the global war on terror. What does that mean? 35% more people were joining when there was two, technically three massive wars in the Middle East going on that we're fighting. So how could we possibly do the mental gymnastics to say that's why people aren't joining, okay? I think that's just a huge cop out again. No, not Sergeant Major, if you see this, no knock on you for this. I just think that that's just such a, um, you know, generic response to the problem. That's definitely not the case, okay? That has always been there, and it's never going away. And it's not what's causing this massive drop-off, okay? There's no logic behind that statement at all, all right? So, uh, and it really, you know, retention during the global war on terror as a whole has been higher all the way up until the global war on terror ended, and then it has dropped off okay so the math ain't mathing on that one all right so what i want to talk about is the three main reasons um i and i this isn't just my opinion this is from hundreds of young people who've reached out to me and told me the reasons why they're considering not joining um what the big three are okay number one and i think that this is the hugest it's by far i think it blows everything else out of the water and that is the military's failure to uphold traditional American culture and military culture. What do I mean by that, okay? Um, we all see where American culture is going with the insanity, woke, DEI, all this crazy shit, right? So I wanna just show you what the military is representing itself to the public with this line of clips. Okay, let's, this isn't me, I didn't make these. This is what the Department of Defense is allowing to have out there to show to the American people, this is the military. All right, let's roll some clips. All right, what do we have here? Oh, depressed army girls dancing on TikTok. Okay, that's a good start to uh, what the public perception is. Let's see what we got next. 
like, oh, this is a fine-looking young sailor. Sure, he's ready to serve. What's weird about this? Oh, never mind. Yeah, that's a good representation of the military. Great. What about more Navy? What do we got? Oh, this is a nice-looking young man. Oh, never mind. And more TikTok dancing. Fantastic. This is exactly what we need for readiness right here. Ready to fight conflicts. How about recruitment? Oh, this is a sponsored by Department of Defense recruitment for Navy. Hmm, more TikTok dancing. Interesting. What else do we got? I'm sure this is solving the recruitment crisis. How I don't have any whiskeys? Very mindful. Very demure. See how I come to work with a regulation haircut? I'm very mindful. I'm very demure. See how I wear my hat level? Very cutesy. Very demure. All right, yeah, super painful to watch, okay? All this cringe TikTok bullshit that is infesting its way through the military and through the public perception of the military, okay? So uh, a little bit later, watch a clip of Sergeant Major talking about how important it is for, you know, sort of the American military to showcase itself to the American public. Well, what are we showcasing here? What, what exactly is this? Because um, in my time in the military, it was all spent working on lethality, readiness, deploying, combat, defense of the nation. I'm not really sure where this is all tying in. And in fact, um, you know, by trying to, what they're trying to do here is appear, you know, appeal to Gen Z, right? With the tick talking and the dancing and the memeing. Okay, well, I can tell you not all Gen Z buys into this BS, okay? Especially not all the ones that follow my channel and watch me, you're getting ready. They are traditional American value-based kids, okay? And they are looking to serve their country, be patriotic, all the things that have always been the same for the last 200 years, okay? And this is deterring, which what I would say is your actual, you know, your 23% are eligible to join. You're, deter you're deterring that demographic. You're 23, why? So that you can pander to your 77% of the demographic who aren't even going to join anyway, okay? So that is the big one for me. This, I don't know what, the idea, I know what it is. I hear this a lot of times, and that's that the military should be a juxtaposition of American society. No, it shouldn't, okay? The American military does not transform and change each decade with whatever the culture changes, okay? How do I know that? Well, in the early 1900s, during the massive progressive and socialist movement, the military didn't do that, okay? During Vietnam, during the massive hippie and progressive movement, guess what the military didn't do? Didn't transform itself. However, now in 2024, we're deciding that's a good idea, okay? Military, military, uh, American military culture has been the same. In fact, so many traditions are literally from the Revolutionary War, haven't changed at all, and that has been super, super important, okay? Um, now, uh, with that, okay, again, I, I can't beat that one enough to death. It just drives me crazy when I see everything I see online and TikTok and all this cringe shit, okay? That is not helping. It is hurting. It is hurting. So when we see in those clips, some of those from are literally, there's a two-star general in one of those clips, right? It just cringe as shit. There's, from actual army recruiting command is where those videos are coming from. So... I know I have a ton of higher-ups in special operations, colonels, generals even, because they've reached out and talked to me, sergeant majors. Please, stop. Stop that. This is That is not the way for us to fix the military, okay? Now, also, I just did a video about how the world, and sergeant major talked about it, the world is cascading towards World War III in a hurry. Maybe we should be hyper-focused on getting back to training, lethality, all the things that are important to defend the nation and not on fucking TikTok dancing, okay? Now, sorry, try not to get worked up, but as someone who spent my entire adult life uh, in the military and Army Special Forces, it drives me insane to see what I'm seeing, okay? Number two, this is obviously another huge one, um, and that is the pay is shit. <laughs> let's let's not beat her, uh, beat around the bush, okay? Three, four years ago was the pay. The pay was fairly competitive. It wasn't bad, especially I did a video on um, what we get paid as Green Berets. Pretty competitive with the civilian world. You know, not the best. But now, all right, four years later, three years later, 
inflation is decimated the economy okay we all know gro grocery prices are two to three times what they cost three years ago gas prices double um and the american or the the soldier's pay is increased like six percent maybe over like three years uh while prices have increased 300 percent okay just so you know upwards of an e6 in the military can get food stamps okay that is a senior nco can qualify for food stamps that is not good okay and now the civilian world right you can make more money working at mcdonald's than you can as like a specialist in the military so where is the incentive right and while hey you're gonna get your gi bill and free school you have the left promising everybody free college so how do we do that well the the pay has to be completely restructured it has to be we have to look at the last three years of what's happened to the country and the economy and prices and completely overhaul the pay system to make it realistic back to where it was to be competitive okay if you want high quality people to join the military you have to pay them competitively to what they can get in the civilian world otherwise why would they want to join okay special forces has sort of been lucky to be able to bypass that because of how cool and flashy and awesome the job is we've been able to pull people in from all sorts of different civilian um, lines of work to come try out okay Guess what? All the cool stuff is kind of gone at the moment. So the incentives to join are already um, much lower from a patriotic standpoint and a culture standpoint and a job standpoint. So you're going to have to give incentives somehow. And that's probably going to be money, okay? Maybe rather than sending $100 billion to Ukraine, we can send it to our soldiers instead. And people might want to join. Hmm, there's an idea. Maybe talk to your local politician about that one. Now, uh, number three. Okay, and this one I hear, I don't think it's as um, big, but I do think it's probably the most common thing I hear, right? And that is that people don't want to serve a corrupt government, all right? Now, my argument to this is the government's always been corrupt. It's just now everybody's kind of with the media and our access to information, like everybody's kind of like woken up to it. We can see what our politicians are doing. We can see how they're you know laundering hundreds of billions of dollars to foreign countries through the military industrial complex it's kind of obvious now um even though i do think they've always been doing it but um yeah people like especially this current administration i get this all the time why would you want to go serve your country that potentially is so corrupt okay um, again this one i'm not sure i buy into as much but they're not wrong in a lot of cases, all right? And then the biggest part of this here, too, is the massive botched withdrawal of Afghanistan. That was a gutter to the recruitment. Why? How many people reach out to me and I'm like, why would I join the military when my country is just going to hang me out to dry? They all just watched what our government just did to thousands of global war on terror veterans, right? We spent 20 years fighting that war. I lost close friends, teammates, um and we just pissed all over everybody right and, and just said big middle finger to the military and all the veterans who served in that war so you can see as a young person you watched your government do that to you much like our government did it to the vietnam veterans okay um same thing when my dad got home he was getting spit on and being called a baby killer when he got off the plane uh we kind of have done that again so this next generation i can understand why they look at that and go yeah not for me. I'm not, I'm not going to serve some corrupt government that's going to hang me out to dry and leave me for dead. And it's kind of a fair assessment in that runs. okay? Now, uh, one more clip about from the Sergeant Major talking about how we need to show America what the military is. Let's check it out. And part of that is understanding the American people that we're trying to actually bring into the service. You know, I think we forget that after 9-11, we shut ourselves off to America. I mean, I was in the Army in the 90s, and I was an Army brat in the 70s and 80s, and we didn't used to have ECPs and gates, and I mean, it, it's, 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 it's a real thing. I don't know what goes on behind there. I'm not allowed. It's a us versus them thing. And so this last year and a half, you've seen us come out from those gates and also invite the communities into the installations. You're going to see a lot more of that. We're America's Army. I mean... Wow, they they need to they need to be proud of us, and they also need to know that their sons and daughters could be a part of that. 
Okay, so he, he, he's talking there about how, you know, with terrorism, global war on terror, right, kind of shut everything off. We did stop doing, you know, people can't get on bases, things like that. Yeah, well, here's the reality. 20 million undocumented people over the last three years have entered this country, hundreds of thousands from Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan, mainland China. We're, we're not opening the bases up, right, because that's way too dangerous now with all the terrorist sleeper cells that are, terrorist sleeper cells that are in the country at this point. Can't do that, but... What he is going with that is that we got to have more integration with the American public so they can see the military for what it is, okay? Now, why not, if you're going to do this, like, use good representations of the community. Grab yourself a Jocko or, you know, Evan Hafer or Mike Glovers. There's so many actual decent representations that you guys could use and not get cringe-ass YouTube and TikTokers that are just regular civilians. Please stop doing that, okay? Um, you know, aside from that. But um, I don't think that that's necessary, okay? I think, again, part of it is the military should be a culture that society strives to be, not the other way around. The military shouldn't be striving to figure out how to become like American society, okay? We have one job, it's national defense. We should not be concerned about all this other stuff, all right? So... Um, how do we fix it, right? This is the big one. It's always, it's one thing to bitch and whine and complain about things. It's another to offer solutions, okay? So here's my solutions that I'm offering to the higher-ups who definitely won't listen. Because again, understand at the Sergeant Major of the Army's level, you know, he said, said there, you know, it's great because I'm not politics. He's a politician, okay? The generals are politicians. Anyone above about a colonel, politician. Okay, the only way you can get that high is politics and military. It's, it, it is what it is, right? So, unfortunately, you know, as much as they want to feel like they've got a finger of the pulse of, you know, the young people and soldiers, they don't. They're completely, completely out of the loop. Um, and that's where a lot of the problems are coming from. So, number one, get the DEI, woke, TikTok, Disney Corporation culture bullshit out of the military. Just get it out, okay? Cut it all out. Um get back to a meritocracy, okay, where the best people for the job join, get back to where not everything is race baiting and gender baiting and all these things. We're doing national defense. Our job is to go close with and destroy the enemy, period. Let's get back to that as the culture, please. Now, um, actually restructuring pay and benefits. I talked about this. This, this one has to happen, okay? Especially with Potentially, who wins this next election? Inflation ain't going away, all right? Prices is probably going to 3x again in the next four years. What does that mean? An 8% pay raise over four years is going to leave everybody in poverty, okay? So this is a harder one because it takes congressional budgeting, whatever, but, like, you need to ramp up pay massively, massively. It's got to become competitive. It's not going to be competitive. We're going to head down that road, down the rabbit hole of recruitment catastrophe it's not going to change and again heading into an uncertain world where china is about to invade taiwan ukraine and russia are at war israel palestine iran's about to attack israel whole world's about to go up in flames let's maybe take this serious and actually try to fix things rather than use tiktok videos and pander to people who aren't going to join the military in general right so um and again final one this is going to wrap it up i can't stress this enough um Make the military the culture that society looks up to, okay? Don't have the military trying to look up to whatever society's culture is in the moment because it changes like a wave, all right? So let's get back to our roots, back to traditional American patriotism values in the military at least, okay? If you want to whine and complain about that and bitch about America, do it somewhere else, okay? But here in the service, our job is to defend the nation. Let's get back to that as the focus, all right? So there's my rant about the situation, all right? Again, any high ups, if you see this, you know, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I think we just need to be honest because when I look around, I don't see any honesty coming out of trying to solve the recruitment crisis. All right, guys, have a good one.